Hey guys, Danny from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back. And we're on lesson three now of our Funk Fundamentals level one. And we're now gonna be adding ghost notes. So we're gonna be taking the same three exercises that we did in the previous two lessons, but now adding these chucka chuckas, the ghost notes, whatever you want to call them. It's the difference between a funk sounding pretty stale and giving it some real life. So when are you kind of hearing a track that's kind of All those little, you know, all that kind of stuff, or even just as basic as, you know, that, that kind of, you can call it a crunchy sound, you can call it a chicka chicka, you can call it a ghost note, whatever you want to call it, it's those bits that add life to the sound and to the funky guitar track. So we're gonna learn how to do that in this lesson. So it's a really big lesson, guys. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. Hey guys, if you've just joined us here on YouTube for this Funk Essentials quest, then please do go ahead and check out the website. It's all absolutely free. You get the full write-up, you get the tab, the chord diagrams, the scale diagrams, everything you need to get the most out of this course. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to us here on YouTube and leave us a comment. We make sure that we get back to every single one of you. Okay guys, so before we get into the exercises, it's important to note how we visually show ghost notes on a strumming pattern. Okay, so it's the X's. So as you can see here, this is a strumming pattern and those X's, anytime you see the X underneath the strum, that's where you want to give it this sound. Okay, and all this is, is coming back to the last lesson whereby we had our E9 and we removed it, i.e. we just stopped squeezing it. Now the, the final layer of that is we keep it unsqueezed, so it's still resting on the strings but it's not pushing down and we actually do strum it. That gives us our ghost note sound, our chucka chucka. <laughs> chucka chucka, like that, right? Um, so here, it might take a bit of time kind of making it sound like that. When you do it right now, it might sound a bit like or, or you might get a few open strings in there. You might get that low E string, so you need to make sure that's muted off a little bit with this, this finger here, just mutes the low E string, that's important. Um, just literally with the tip of the finger. But we wanna be able to hit all six strings. Now we're not already always necessarily gonna hit all six strings, but we wanna practice that. And we wanna get a nice dead sound, okay? So that when we come to go, we get a nice clear difference between the notes that are on and the notes that are off the notes that are supposed to be the full richness of the chord and the notes that are supposed to be a very clear chuck or chucka or something like that, okay? So that's our, our, our aim here. That's what we wanna do and that's how we're gonna see it on the rhythm pattern. So if we see our first rhythm pattern, you can see it's the same rhythm pattern. So it's that, um, that first exercise, but now we've got X's underneath some of the arrows, okay? now. There's, th these can be gray arrows or they might even be red arrows because you are fundamentally hitting the strings. But the key thing is that if you see the X, you are hitting the string, but you are um, obviously not squeezing down on the chord, okay? So all things said and done, this rhythm pattern with the ghost notes now sounds like this. Now, some of you might find that easier because you don't have to fiddle around with sometimes hitting the strings, sometimes not. But this is a very extreme example, I would say. You know, here we're either hitting them or doing ghost notes. And there's gonna be a lot of times as we're gonna come across in exercise two and three, whereby you're doing hits, hits ghost notes, and just dead space, okay? Where we're just letting it breathe, okay? So we really need to kind of get the different sounds nice and clear in our head and therefore we're gonna do it nice and slowly. So let's get that drum beat back up and we'll just do this one a few times round, trying to get as close as possible to that sound, okay, the sound I just did. So it's well worth kind of trying to play along with me on this one. Hopefully you're roughly at this speed at this point, but don't worry if you're not, it really doesn't matter. Um, I don't care what speed you're at, to be honest, as long as the technique is good. So it could be 50, it could be 40 BPM, whatever. So here we go. 
a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a... And there we have it. So that's exercise one, guys. I hope that makes sense. Now, do take your time with that because that's the reason that's so black and white is because it's the perfect first one to start with. So just you pause the video, just do that as long as it takes until you're really starting to hear that sound rather than, you know, where there's like harmonics, unfortunately, everywhere or little notes that are still fretted. We really want to get a totally dead sound like that. Okay, now once you're ready, uh, we've got the second pattern. So I'm just gonna put it up in front of me here. Now, when we're looking at this pattern, notice that we've only got certain strums that are ghost notes. So the X is on the first four hits. So we get one E and a, uh, and then we get two and, as we've already spoken about. Now, importantly here, after the two and, the choice in my mind, is to stop that dead. So we get. Okay. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So there's a lot going on in this one. This is a much more complicated strumming pattern. Okay, even though we already know this strumming pattern, when we start to add in the ghost notes, it definitely goes up a notch. Okay, so don't worry if it's suddenly like, whoa, what happened there? I should know this. Don't, don't worry about that at all. You know, this is this is now very new and very different. Okay, so um, you'll notice there that in the after my two E, so I then stop the chord as by not squeezing it anymore, and on that uh, and a uh, three E and a, uh, it was all just nothing. You know, just the kind of air strumming, leaving it be. Okay, letting that space breathe. Then on the four, I did a chucker, and I hit the E on the up, and then again, just kept the arm movement going, but didn't play anything. Okay, so let me just do it really slow again. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Do it again. Oops, oh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. Okay, let's try and speed that up a little bit with the drum beat. Okay, so to get out to 60, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so. Four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three the four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Okay, so what I would say about that one is it's, it's noticeably harder because you've got space, you've got ghost notes, and you've got the normal strum notes. Uh, you've also got the hold, which you need to still be considering. Um, and it's actually more realistic as well. I would typically say that when you're doing a funky strumming, unless you're doing like a, kind of like a, I don't know, like a Red Hot Chili Peppers vibe or something like that, which is quite rock, uh, let's call it rock funk, which is another subgenre of funk. Um, where it's quite aggressive, you know. You know. You know, that kind of thing, where you're probably either doing chucka chuckas or hitting. In more subtle, so the original funk music, the kind of disco funk, pop funk, whatever, you will definitely have a combination of all three. The, the, the ghost notes, the held, the kind of nothing sounds of the space, as well as the actual normal strum notes like this. So. This one might take a bit of time, but take your time with it. Go through it, get it as clear as you can before doing exercise three. 
So exercise three uh, is going to sound like this. Okay, so let's just level this up. So we started with simply this one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Then in the last lesson, we got it up to this one E and a two E and a three E and E. And what we're now going to do is a very specific ghost notes within that. So we're going to go like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Woo! Okay, let's go through that. I'm going to go through that a few times. So I'm not going to count it this time. <laughs> okay. Might feel like crazy at the moment, but if we, if we kind of speed that up a little bit, we'll start to get the sound in our heads, okay? So. Ah. So let's just go through that again. So nice and slowly. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, so I'm going to put this with the drum beat. We're going to slow this one down a little bit because it's a bit more complicated. Um, so we're going to go to a 50 BPM. Okay, and put that drum beat back on. Okay, two and a four E and a, like that. So we've got this kind of movement. Okay, and four and one E and a two E and. <laughs> okay, again, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E, two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and I've lost it. Ah, I'm going to do it again. Um, right, so as you can see, this is great. This is all staying on the video, guys, because as I'm going through this, it's so easy to get lost in 16th note pans that are more complicated like this. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm just going to keep refining it until what tends to happen with me, and I'm sure it will do with you as well, is that you just start to then hear it. Once you've heard it, once you've really heard it, you'll get it without the strum, without the actual counting. Okay. So I'm almost there with it. I've got this kind of like dum chaka chaka like this. Okay. So let's go. Okay, now I do appreciate that that is definitely the hardest one so far, as you'd expect in the third lesson uh, of the um, of kind of leveling these up. So when you get that bit more up to some kind of speed, okay. You can hear how as you slow it down, sometimes it actually feels a bit harder, especially once you've got it, playing it a little bit quicker actually makes more sense because you, you can hear the basic strum. Dun, 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 dun. You can kind of hear that and then you're adding in those chucka chuckas really quite naturally at that point. But it's all a process to kind of build up to that. So what I'd say guys is at the end of this, you've got that final exercise. So you've got the exercise one, two and three is what I meant. And in this final form, let's say, uh, for any Dragon Ball Z fans out there, it's the Super Saiyan 5. <laughs> it's the final form of the exercise. And we've now got it to a point where you need to be putting that into your daily practice. So every day, go over those exercise one, two, and three with the ghost note versions as we just practiced until they're really starting to get there. Because if you can do those three exercises, trust me, you'll be able to play most funk tracks, especially as I break them down for you over the next couple of units. So that's your goal here. And luckily for you, as you'd expect with YJ, in the next lesson, we're going to be taking one of those strumming patterns 
and applying it to more like a proper track. So we start to hear how when we start to get it up more to like 80 BPM, we get a real proper funk sound. So I'll see you for that and good luck with that practice. All right, that's it for me for this lesson, guys. If you want to head over to the next lesson, all you have to do is click here somewhere. And if you want to start from the beginning of the course, the full playlist is here. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing how you're getting on and we'll do our best to get back to every single comment or question that you guys have.